Hello, welcome, and thanks for coming to Plugin-Based AVI Architectures with Qt. I'm Vladimir, this is Christoph. So, speaking shortly, what exactly are plugins? Well, plugins are just another way to make your AVI system more flexible in terms of, well, testing, deployment, and being more maintainable. Plugins, speaking about what they are physically, are just dynamic or shared libraries loaded by application or maybe just yet another library explicitly that is not linked to. And a standard example would be your image editor of choice, for example, or just Qt Creator. There is this curious case that you guys might have heard about so-called static plugins, but those are just basically normal plugins uh, statically linked into the application image. And this is probably very, very Qt specific and no one else, I guess, does it. Uh, well, the whole topic, topic of static versus dynamic and uh, of uh, issues of linking and loading uh, is clearly out of scope for this session, but here are some notes for those who are curious and are new to the topic. Then, speaking about Qt itself, it heavily relies on plugins for things like loading uh, images in various formats or uh, talking to different databases. And the reason is it's uh, quite easy to extend your application by just putting another plugin into the right path and then uh, having Qt loaded on your application startup, which means you wouldn't have to recompile uh, Qt itself or your application. Uh, designer and creator also heavily rely on plugins. And of course, you can define your own plugin formats, and that's exactly what we are going to do here, uh, using our custom plugin format and defining a small demo slash example IVI system with it. Then, uh, speaking about QML, and here QML obviously is the technology of choice uh, if you are doing automotive IVIs. Uh, there is this standard in quotes uh, type of QML plugins uh, presented by QQML extension plugin C++ class, uh, which uh, does more or less what the usual um, Qt plugins do, uh, and in addition also registers uh, the custom um, QML types you may implement in your plugin slash library. Uh, but th there is also a curious differences, difference I'm sorry, between standard QML plugins, uh, which come uh, uh, with your QML modules and regular in quotes plugins, like those used for image formats, various type, types, or uh, different databases. And the difference is uh, QML plugins are uh, loaded lazily, which is uh, when the QML dir which mentions the plugin in the plugin line, uh, the QML dir file is parsed, uh, which happens when uh, an item which uh, imports a module containing the plugin is first instantiated, which in turn means that basically, depending on the execution path, at runtime, whole dependency trees or uh, subtrees or chains of dependent um, plugins and modules can even never be loaded if no items uh, ever actually happen to be associated and thus trigger the loading. So let's uh, start by thinking about what, think, what, the, what are the things that we need to consider when uh, designing a plugin-based IVI architecture. So firstly, we need to ensure that our plugin interfaces and the features we provide actually map nicely into the project specifications. So, and we also need to uh, think about component reusability, our team setup, uh, the field deployment specifics. So, for example, if uh, we're developing an IVI that we know will always run on a specific uh, screen setup, so a specific uh, screen resolution, there really isn't any uh, benefit from investing in uh, defining a a uh, plugin infrastructure that would uh, cater to uh, custom layouts. And uh, then secondly, inter-plugin dependencies uh, should ideally be avoided, but we know that we don't live in an ideal uh, world, so uh, at the minimum they need to be uh, explicitly manifested. So uh, the actual uh, IVI can uh, try to resolve all, all our dependencies, and, and, all, and if the worst happens, because uh, some plugin is missing or maybe there's an uh, version incompatibility, it gracefully fails. And uh, so the deployment team can actually easily uh, trash this and uh, rectify it. And finally, 
the core part of the system, so the part that's uh, responsible for loading the plugins, uh, providing an interface for the plugins to, com to talk about themselves and uh, to also uh, influence the IVI itself, so pop up plug, uh, pop up, uh, pop up, a uh, pop up, uh, interrupt, uh, post some interruptions, should actually be encapsulated in a shared library, so that all the uh, plugins themselves can be developed in a uh, independent manner. This comes into play if you're dealing with uh, distributed teams. Teams, so uh, if you if you are able to uh, abstract all your core functionality in a library and also have dependency injection underneath. You can actually uh, have uh, the uh, and remote teams so use a mock setup where they actually the IVI itself would be a glorified uh, QML viewer, and then you'd have the core, li core library and uh, the actual remote team would be able to go quite far without ever touching the actual software hardware stack. Right. And then speaking about uh, different teams and different vendors, uh, in scenario when you have various vendors for your plugins, uh, it may happen that uh, some of them may actually prefer to not expose their source code, in which case they can happily ship uh, just the plugin binaries uh, adhering to the agreed upon interfaces. And interestingly, well, of course, uh, the same applies to the um, IVI vendor uh, itself, who could also provide, like Chris just said, uh, just a binary adhering to the agreed upon interface, uh, not expose their uh, source code, which brings us to a system where all the parties involved, uh, be it plugin vendors or the IVM vendor, um, are basically uh, creating uh, together a uh, well, ecosystem of binaries talking to each other through well-defined well sorry, interfaces. So to illustrate some approaches, we came up with a very simple uh, architecture for an I plugin based IVI. It's deliberately kept simple so it's easy to digest and uh, extend if you're willing to play around with it because we'll be sharing the code. Uh, so, the dem as Vladimir already mentioned, the demo uh, architecture does not utilize KitQML extension plugins, but we rather rely on uh, our custom interfaces and a Q plugin loader directly. This is because our plugins actually need to provide some additional data so we would be able to construct the UI. And in the case of extension plugins, we'll just get custom types, which would obviously involve some QML glue code. So the three types of plugins we'll be supporting are feature plugins. So that would be our most numerous group because those are the actual plugins realizing the IVI's functionality like phone, media management. Uh, then we support. Also, then we also support uh, layout plugins. So those are the plugins that actually provide the surfaces that uh, the feature plugins get rendered into, and also de define the surface positioning. And finally, the uh, theme plugins that are simply responsible for customizing the uh, common components and providing a global palette that so that the feature plugins can actually uh, select a palette. Uh, current theme colors, so we have a constant, uh, consistent color scheme around the IVI. So um, let's have a brief overview of, a, uh, of the interfaces. So uh, the common part about uh, uh, that's shared between all the interfaces is the, they will all have a cleanup method so that the IVI is able to request that a certain plugin releases some reloads, its, its resources for whatever reason. Uh, we also supply uh, major two uh, versioning uh, functions, which actually you don't have to implement because uh, there's a, uh, a uh, macro defined that actually takes the values from the project file. And then the, the feature specific, the actual feature specific API uh, starts with the uh, feature being able to install its own translations because by the very nature of uh, plugins it might be hard or in some cases even impossible to provide the, a single uh, monolithic translation file that would encompass all the plugins present in the system. Then uh, the plugins are uh, allowed to register some uh, custom QML modules uh, so they can also cater uh, uh, some custom QML types to other plugins but again this needs to be uh, present in a manifest type, uh, manifest file, so it can be easily resolved. Uh, they can also export context properties, but really the very core of the plugin and the part that makes this very simple is that the uh, 
only requirement for the plugin to work is for it to provide three uh, uh, URLs to actual items uh, that, uh, that encompass the actual features preview, main view, and shortcut. Then the main layout also, as, as mentioned for cleanup and versioning, and uh, also just a, the requirement is that it provides a layout URL, and it can also export some properties, but it deliberately cannot uh, register any uh, custom types because we do not want anyone to have a hard dependency on the layout because layouts are, by their own nature, uh, switchable. And then the theme, also very simple, just uh, a, the ability to add custom image providers and the, and the URL for the theme object. Now, coming to some potential pitfalls you may stumble into when doing resource initialization and handling QML paths. Well, firstly, the good thing. Uh, so, plugin resources, let's say QRC, right, is in the common abbreviation, are initialized automatically for plugins, well, because they are shared libraries. Uh, then, secondly, uh, you can have, well, actually, the very same resource file name for all your uh, different plugins, let's say just resource QRC or whatever. And then, again, this kind of stems from how shared libraries uh, deal with resources. Uh, then there is this tricky thing about having plugins, uh, let's say, presenting the same feature, uh, but coming in different versions, in which case it may or may not work if you use the same uh, wild resource URLs multiple times. Let's say you have your main for, well, your feature, main uh under a certain path, and then it comes un under the same path in the next version of the plugin. So do not confuse uh, yourself and not run into any issues uh, with the QRC system and with the QML engine caching mechanisms, uh, the advice would obviously be to just, well, use some versioning in your paths, and that will handle it. Uh, lastly, one can be kind of tempted to uh, do a clever thing slash trick and basically restart from scratch by using a new uh, QML engine, right? Uh, but the thing is that type registrations and QML as the source code uh, snippet, I'm sorry, on the screen shows, they are not ranging, they're just global. So just take care. So let's uh, have a look at what's provided in the call library. So the call library provides some very simple QML components. So a panel that's basically a background item that's used by both uh, pop-ups as well as buttons. So, and we also provide two button types, an icon button and a text button, then the themable item, that's our convenience class that lets us uh, assign, uh, use enums to stylize an item. So basically, the enum is used to select a style from our theme manager, and the same goes, it, the same goes for the text label, it's just a convenience class that lets us uh, pick a certain color based on an enum. Then the uh, core library also manages a feature model that's just a simple abstract list model that's a, uh, a subclass and uh, it exposes all of the loaded features, uh, all of the loaded feature properties, just like, like uh, main, main item URL, its ID, its description. That's basically used by the uh, layout to know which feature, features it can render. Uh, then we also provide an API for the plugins to request and dismiss pop-ups. And uh, this also allows the plugins to uh, be notified if a pop-up is dismissed and uh, why it was dismissed and also carry some uh, custom data back to the pop-up. For example, which button dismissed it, so on. Um, and finally, we also take care of, well, as I mentioned before, a theme we provide a theme manager and a base uh, class for the themes. So let's quickly have a look at uh, plugin loader itself. So we start up by creating a Q plugin loader instance, pointed at a suspected uh, file. It doesn't. It really will just. Pick, well, we usually just look at the DRM and take up all the uh, files that are present there, and we try to export, uh, try to get it, its metadata, and uh, try to access its, uh, its uh, interface ID value, which we then compare. To the, to the known interface IDs. And once we get a match, we just simply get an 
Q, Q object pointer from the loader and cast it to our custom interface and then just do some custom initialization on our types. Okay. <clears throat> now something about mm, pitfalls again. So uh, there's this curious case which kind of happens quite often and not always is actually uh, well kind of discovered immediately. It's when you derive your uh, plugin interface from key object, uh, right? And then you add uh, this interface header to headers, uh, QMake variable in multiple projects, which is maybe in all your plugins, in your library, right? Or in your main application, and then all builds and links and runs. But what you end up with is multiple instances of mock generated object slash binary code, right? in your uh, well applications memory at runtime, which is pretty much undefined behavior and can lead to some curious things like, well, messages, error messages like expected type X, but got type X instead, right? And the reason is it's just multiple instances. So uh, this happens sometimes when you kind of abuse the PRI uh, file include mechanism, right? So just use include, include path here. Uh, but to avoid this, one can try to do something which is like, for example, while uh, adding uh, the plugin uh, header interface to uh, headers, let's say, in his main application, and not using something like what we propose here, which is a core library. Uh, and then the problem will be uh, the plugins will fail to link, right? So the solution is uh, for shared things, uh, like while well, you are obviously shared plugin interface, right? Use a shared library. So an illustration would be this. Basically, you would have uh, multiple plugins, right, with binary code for their implementations of the plugin interface in them, uh, referencing, right, slash linking to the binary code for the plugin interface in the core library. And curiously, if you think about this, it's basically what we always do every day with Q object based uh, classes, right? Because Q object actually comes from a library. That's it. You cannot link to an application. So. Okay, so we finally got to okay, the so that's demo. demos part. So first, maybe not too inspiring, but this is how the application looks without, the IVI looks without any plugins, so obviously no layout, no main layout, no theme, no loaded features. And no nothing. No nothing. <laughs> yeah, and then we'll show you how it, yeah, let's, let's see how it mm -hmm. will look with a single. Yeah, let's load one plugin, which will be a plugin implementing a phone feature, right? And we'll also have, obviously, we'll have to have one plugin for the layout and one theme plugin to style them. Yeah, please notice that we do not restart the HMI. Yeah, so we didn't restart anything, right? We got three plugins, they got dynamically loaded, and that's what we got. We got a mock phone uh, feature, which we can expand collapse, right? Pair something. Fake pairing, yeah. yeah. Fake call and yeah. So then we can also add uh, additional layouts. Yeah, and the goal is just that uh, we can have multiple layouts, right? So why not play with them? Let's imagine a technician, right? Maybe the car shop or somebody else. Well, just dropping in libraries, basically. Yeah, and that's an additional layout. Okay. How do we switch? Yeah, we can. Switch between them now. Let's uh, focus. Okay. Uh, uh, so next slide will be. Next slide will be themes. Yeah. So let's add a second theme now. Again, sync. And then sync. We, we can switch the themes. We can switch the layouts. We basically have four combinations, right, of the main screen now. Could be could be eight, you know, with one more layout or theme. Uh, and what comes next is oh. Yeah. Your favorite. Yeah, the funny thing. <laughs> Your favorite. So, because we only uh, require that the feature provides uh, a main, uh, main item, the main item URL, the uh, preview, and a shortcut, we can basically get away with providing simply QML. This is what we do. We uh, look for a folder, and if that folder contains a preview.qml, main.qml, and shortcut.qml, we can actually auto generate a plugin for it. A Plugin instance for it. Okay. Uh, QML. 
So it's refresh. Okay, so this is, I'm not sure if this is using Wi-Fi, but this is how, well, OpenStreetMap <laughs> HTML plugin works until it finds out that actually there are no maps, you know, uh, despite there being some in the cache. So let's wait a little. Hopefully it's a couple of seconds. Actually, I'm not seeing it. <laughs> it may be slow Wi-Fi. Or let me see. Well, you know, was working on Windows. <laughs> okay, let's let it go. What comes next? Another of your favorites, plugin reloading. Okay. So we already mentioned that we have versioning in our plugins. So let's quickly check out Media One. Ah, branch and trout. No, sorry. Yeah, one. Yeah. So we have a 1.0 version of a media plugin here. Just a dummy. Just a dummy. And then because the plugins actually expose their version data, you can bump their version at runtime. Okay. This is it, and do we have more slides? No. Actually, no. no. Okay, where's our slide? Last one. Okay. Well, thank you. You have questions? Okay, yeah, sure, please. With your knowledge of plugins for QROs, can you load Well, uh, you mean features, like pure QML features? Uh, yeah, nothing stopping you. No yeah, problem. Well, yeah. Basically, this is, well, one mechanism is the mechanism of loading them into the application, right? But we can also speak about a separate delivery mechanism, right? Which could use internet, what not. Well, where, where the we, very idea behind loading at runtime is so that you can have over the air uh, updates. So you pull down a newer version and then cause a sync and it will unload the uh, the old version and pop up the new version so the old version the old version will just be a stub it will be forced to clean up all its resources actually speaking about reloading one thing we should mention is that uh, you probably shouldn't try to unload the plugin itself as a library which is known to be tricky and dangerous yeah. but what you could do is just ensure that all the yeah. well, that items are it destroyed it cleans up most of its heavy resources and these stops and, well oh. at one at some point with automotive, well, the car will be restarted, so. Yeah, yeah. You can also, also de-initialize the resources, actually. Yeah, de-initialize the resources, but yes, yes, but the... Mm -hmm, yeah. The memory could be reclaimed. If anybody has any more questions, we can answer that. That's probably it. More Thank questions? you. Thank you.